Happy Saturday! Miss Riding Hood. Who is that? Little Red Riding Hood. Little Red Riding Hood. All right. So tonight we are on story number four: Puss and Boots. That this is four. Number page thirty. This is page three zero is thirty. Illustrated by Maria Bogut Bogade Bogade. Page thirty. Let's see what we got. Puss and boots. There once was an old miller who had three sons. When the miller died, he left the mill to his oldest son. The middle son is that boots. That's boots. That's puss and boots right there. The middle son was given the donkeys, and the youngest son, a kind man who had always put his father and brothers before himself, was left nothing but his father's cat. Ah, oh, see, he was left by the old miller. That was the cat was left to his youngest son. And is that his cat? Yeah, the youngest son's cat. I don't know which one is the youngest son. Maybe that one is the youngest son. Let's read the story. Let's pay attention so we can see. What will become of me, said the miller's son, with a sigh, looking at his cat. Buy me a fine pair of boots, and I will help make your fortune. For your father thought you deserved it, replied the cat. What's her name? A talking cat. I don't know her name. We gotta listen. The miller's son could not believe his ears. So the miller's son brought the cat a fine pair of boots. And uh, those aren't the sons at all. Let's read, let's read the story so we can know. Uh, and the two of them set off to seek their fortune. After a while, they came to a grand palace. Wouldn't it be wonderful to live so grandly, said the miller's son? Well, we can't read the story with your head on the book. Okay, let's see. Later, while the miller's son was sleeping, the cat went hunting and caught a rabbit. He put it in his sack and he took it to the palace. A gift from the king. A gift to the king from my master. The Marquis of Carabas. The Marquis of Carabas? Said the cat, presenting it to the king. The cat went back to the miller's son and told him what he had done. Now the king will want to know who the Marquis of Carabas is, laughed the cat. A clever cat, the miller's son, could not believe his ears. Every day for a week, the cat delivered a gift to the king. Each time saying it was from Marcus of Carabas. After a while, the king became very curious and decided he'd like his daughter to meet the mystery nobleman, whoever he might be. Move over a little bit, babe. When the cat heard that the king and his daughter... Were on their way, he wasted no time. You must take off all your clothes and stand in the river, the cat told his master. The puzzled miller's son did as he was told, and his cat hid his master's tattered old clothes behind a rock. When the cat heard the king's carriage approaching, he jumped onto the road and begged for help. Your gracious majesty, said the cat, my master was robbed of all his clothes while he was bathing in the river. The king, gave, the king gave the miller's son a suit of fine clothes to wear. Please join us in the carriage, said the king. So the cat, the cat opened the door and the miller's son climbed in. That's Puss in Boots. That is. He looked very handsome in his new suit. The king's daughter fell in love with him at once. The cat ran ahead, cutting through the surrounding countryside. Every time he met people working in the fields, he told them, if the king stops to ask who owns this land, you must tell them it belongs to Marcus of Carabas. Marquis, Marcus, whatever. Beyond the fields, the cat reached a grand castle. He spoke to the people. Hello. He spoke to the people. All right, okay, I can't see, I can't see. She made me lose my spot. 
He spoke to the people working in the field next to it and discovered that it belonged to a fierce org. The cat stood bravely in his boots and knocked on the castle door. Who dares to disturb me, roared the voice from inside the castle. I have heard that you are a very clever ogre, called the cat. I have come to see what tricks you can do. The ogre opened the door and immediately changed himself into a great snarling lion. The cat felt scared, but he did not show it. That's quite a clever trick, said the cat. But the lion is a very large creature. I would think it would be mu a much better trick to change into something very small like a mouse. The ogre liked to show off his tricks. He changed at once into a little mouse. The cat pounced on the mouse and ate him up. Then the cat went into the castle and told all the servants that their new master was Marcus of Carabas. They were glad to be rid of the fierce ogre, so they did not complain. The king is on his way to visit, and you must prepare a grand feast to welcome him, said the cat. When the king's carriage arrived at the castle, the cat was waiting to welcome him. Your gracious majesty, he purred. Welcome to the home of my master. A cunning cat, the miller's son, could not believe his eyes. You must ask for the princess's hand in marriage, whispered the cunning cat to his master. The miller's son did just as he was told. The king, who was impressed by everything he saw, agreed. Soon, the Marquis of Carabas and his wife were married, and they lived verily, verily, very, not verily, very happy, a very happy life together. The cat was made a lord of their court and was given the most splendid clothes, which he wore proudly, along with those fine boots that the miller's son had bought him. The end. And is it? It is the end. That's the next story. Did you like that story? Did you like it? Did you like the story? All right. Say good night. Love you. Love you. Let me see your your lost tooth. You don't want to show everybody? Addie lost her first tooth tonight. It is gone. It's under her pillow for the tooth fairy. I show them. You want to show everybody your, your tooth? Mm. Oh, we put it in a bag so that the tooth fairy could find it easily. <gasps> there it is. There's Addie's first baby tooth. Do you think the tooth fairy will come? Yes. Yeah. All right, say goodnight. Good night.